guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl, The Flash, and everything to do with the new film that's coming out. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC, EU, or DC TV videos later this year. So hopefully you enjoyed my latest video. So that was a couple of days ago on the new Supergirl suit, because Andy Muschietti released a new look at the Supergirl emblem and sort of her chest area. But now, set photos have been released, and I'm like a day behind on this, but I am finally getting around to it, and let's freak out about this new Supergirl suit, let's compare it a little bit to Melissa's suit, and also just generally talk about some of the leaks that have been coming out from the new film. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. So, I was actually on the set during this day, when they were filming, I wasn't there during the Supergirl scenes, that was later in the day. But obviously I was just there as a fan, like, looking in, I wasn't there as, like, any exclusive person. So it was pretty cool to see it all go down, and, I mean, there was loads of fans there, so I wasn't the only person. However, yes, Supergirl did turn up towards the end of the day, and this is obviously Sasha Kale, who was recently cast as the new Supergirl, and she was suspended from a really high crane up in St. Paul's in London. So this is where they were filming, it was supposed to be a sort of courtroom scene, and that's pretty much all that I'm going to go into in terms of the story. But she turns out Barry Allen's there, Iris is there, and also Bruce Wayne is there, played by Michael Keaton. I think that's all you really need to know. Obviously, we don't want to get into spoiler territory here. We just want to talk about the suit and how cool it looks and kind of compare it to Melissa's suit and how they've sort of changed it. So, yeah, let's go ahead into this. So, if you see the photo right here, so this is coming from The Sun. So, I'll leave the link in the description below to them and you can check out all the other photos that they released, some great photos in there, and basically what is going on in the photo is this. So this is kind of what we saw with Andy Muschietti's photo, but that was more of a, just like the chest area, but now we see absolutely everything, and we see that the red area on top of the chest actually continues a lot further than we initially thought. It goes down the arms, it goes round the shoulders and everything, so this is quite a radical new look for Supergirl. The closest we've ever got to a Supergirl like this is Tom Taylor's creation. He did this in 2014, he created a new Supergirl called Lara Lane Ken. If you guys read the comics, she looks pretty damn similar to what Sash Kale looks like in her new Supergirl suit and her haircut. Obviously, her haircut was a choice by the filmmakers, Andy Muschietti was very like, okay, get this haircut because we want you to look like Lara Lane Kent or someone along those lines. I would presume this is their reference. However, obviously they're going to take liberties because they are not copying the comics. They're just taking a look and expanding on from that. Obviously, you can see the costume is a little bit different. I'll put Lara's costume on the screen as well. And so Lara's costume does have that red that continues outwards from the emblem. However, it doesn't go all the way down the arms. It just goes over into her cape and there is like no blue bits there. But if you compare that to Melissa's suit from the CW, what you see is you have the emblem, but then everywhere else surrounding the emblem is blue and it's more separated. And you have the cape, which is red, which is obviously clipped onto her shoulders. So it is quite a different looking suit. And I have to admit, I'm still more of a fan of Melissa's suit. It is more classic Supergirl. And yes, whilst I love the new Supergirl suit, I think it's really, really good. If we are comparing, I'm still going to stick to Melissa's suit just because I think it's more classic Supergirl, and I guess I'm more used to it. So we, we do really have to see it in action to actually properly compare it, which we will do when we get like a trailer. But for now, I think it's looking really cool, and it is very different from Melissa's suit. I'm definitely more in line with Lara's costume from the comics. So let's go a bit into the suit and how it looks. So we have the red bit, we've talked about that. It's a very textured suit. It's actually quite a lot more textured than Melissa's suit, although Melissa's suit is textured, it's textured in a different way. This suit has a lot more kind of rivets everywhere, and it's a lot more defined. Maybe that's just the photo we're seeing, but it does look a bit more textured than Melissa's suit, and more in line with, like, Henry Cavill's Superman suit from Man of Steel, although it looks very different from that. Also, it must be noted that she does have a cape, and her cape isn't on during when they're filming this scene because she is suspended by wires and that's why you kind of got that fake 
abdominal bit in the middle. I don't think that's actually something in the suit. I think that's the harness underneath that she's wearing and they're gonna like digitally paint that out after because she isn't just clipped by those two wires on the side. She has a whole harness underneath her clothes and so obviously it's like a whole stunt costume I think. I think she might have like an alternate version that she uses just for the scenes on the ground because we have seen different photos where she's been wearing a cape so that's confirmed. I think that would have been a huge mistake if they didn't include her cape because I mean it's so iconic right? Anyone in the Superman family in the House of L has to wear a cape because it's just how it goes and Supergirl looks awesome with a cape. So that's why you're not seeing it here, it would have been really awkward, it would have got all tangled up with the wires and it would have looked really weird because the wire is like in front of her and behind her and the cape 100% would have got tangled. And so in terms of the Supergirl logo, it's exactly pretty much bang on the same as Henry Cavill's Superman, although it has some extra detail in the middle that makes it unique to Supergirl. But as we move further down, it's all blue and it very much so is in line with what you've seen with Melissa before. And it must be noted that following along from Melissa's suit and also following along from Lara in the comics, she doesn't have a skirt, she has pants on, as Americans would say, or trousers. So yeah, this is a big deal because normally Supergirl is seen with a skirt and so this is a big choice by them. This is obviously something that was recently implemented into the Supergirl show on the CW because Melissa wanted a suit with pants and obviously it's a lot more comfortable than wearing a skirt in the middle of freezing Vancouver for Melissa specifically. So that makes a whole lot of sense. And considering that they're filming in London, that does make sense for Sasha Calais because London is pretty cold, although it is the summer right now, there is occasional few days where it's very cold, like it was raining on this day, so it was a bit colder. However, I think it's a more stylistic choice in this sense for the film that they've gone with the pants rather than the skirt. I think this is something that they decided about quite a long time ago when they were preparing the film. And so, yeah, it's quite distinctive on the arms that you have the red going all the way down, but you have like half of it being blue on the underside of the arms, around like where the bicep is and going down to the elbow is where the red stops. And then you have an interesting texture going on at kind of like the forearm area, and it must be noted that she does have the things that go around her hands, like her fingers. This is the same as Melissa's suit, so I forgot what that's actually called, but people were making a note of that, and so that's a big thing, and that's a parallel to what you have with Melissa's suit. And another big difference that her costume has is the whole trousers and boots area is all blue. Now, she doesn't have any specific boots. Like, if you see Melissa's Supergirl, which I'll pop up on the screen right here, she has the red boots, and it gives a nice contrast to the rest of the bluey suit. And I think that is the one thing that Sasha's suit is actually missing because a lot of it is very blue and then like the top half is like completely red and if they broke it up a little bit at the bottom with the red boots I think that would have been cool. Also she isn't wearing like any type of boots and it's just like a kind of long onesie so I don't know if they're going to add that in later or was that just while she was flying I'm not 100% sure but that is a differentiation from Melissa's suit on the CW and obviously there is some differences in the texturing on the legs you have this kind of stripe that goes down and that's like a slightly different tone of blue it's a bit brighter and I've obviously talked about her hair before the hair in this case is very short she has dark hair this is very different from a lot of the other versions of Supergirl like the Cara Zor-El versions of Supergirl so this does again line up more with Tom Taylor's version. So it's going to be like a whole different look and I'm actually very glad that they went for something very different from Melissa's Supergirl because there is a lot to live up to because so many people love her Supergirl and she is one of the main reasons why you're seeing a Supergirl on the big screen this early on because I think DC probably didn't have any confidence in including her or giving her her own film really until the success of the CW Supergirl and the popularity of Melissa as Supergirl. So I think, you know, a lot is owed to Melissa and same goes for Ezra's Flash. You know, he showed up in Crisis on Infinite Earths on the DC TV shows, establishing that the DCEU exists in the Arrowverse. It's just like out there in the multiverse on some other Earth is where Ezra's Flash is. 
and so that's how he got the Flash name, so that's already huge. But what else happened during the filming on this day? Well, Michael Keaton showed up, we knew that he was filming, he was around London, he's currently here, and he is playing Bruce Wayne, aka Batman, and so he's wearing a costume that is very much so reminiscent of his Batman 89 costume, and I'm nearly 100% sure he might not be playing Bruce Wayne, but he is playing Thomas Wayne in Flashpoint, because this is the Flashpoint story, you guys know that. So they're coming out of the court, probably from Barry's dad's hearing, and they get like a bunch of questions from reporters, and so I would guess this is probably Thomas Wayne showing up, Supergirl showing up, and this is like the alternate version of the world. And maybe in like Supergirl's film, she's gonna have like a different suit or maybe a different appearance because this is the Flashpoint version of Supergirl. Or maybe they continue with exactly what Sasha is currently wearing when it comes to her film. However, I do feel very strongly that Michael Keaton is the Thomas Wayne of this Flashpoint world, even if they call him Bruce Wayne, and even if he is the same rough version that he played in Batman 89. So that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more Supergirl videos, please be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Also leave a like and a comment to support the channel and support this video and help people discover it. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.